All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that I'm on board now. I hope that you can see me. I hate to waste the introductory time of this with a lot of technical setup. So what I'd like is if somebody can just quick shoot me, uh, put in the comments if you can hear me properly. That's the biggest thing. If you can hear me well, just post that in the comments. But let's get started. And so let's talk about what I'm doing first of all. I decided to do this live streaming because well, I don't really have a good reason, except for I like to do something different every year. Uh, one of the things I like to do with the top 10 is something different. And so the top 100 for the for my top 100, I'll be having Z and Sam join me and they're going to criticize my choices. So we'll see how that works out. Um, and so then I thought, what do I do with the people's choice top 100? And I thought I'll do it live in a session here for you guys to see. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do 50 today and then we'll do 50 another time, maybe next week. But I might wait two weeks so that, you know, I can kind of catch up with the, my top 100 and with Melody's top 100. So, can we, so you, the sound is a little low. Well, I've turned it up as much as I think I can. So I apologize for that. But uh, let's get started on this. Um, what, let, let's talk about the People's Choice Awards first. Um, this year, 1,733 people voted in it. Uh, there was quite a few games that were selected. In fact, there was over 1,000 games that got just one vote, which I thought was interesting. I forgot to tell everybody to vote for the first edition of something. So, like, for example, if you voted for War of the Ring and then War of the Ring Deluxe Edition, I had to go in and figure out how to combine those. I'll try to be more clear on that in the future. And I was surprised that a lot of people voted for expansions. I think an expansion hit the top 200 or so. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, I'm going to be going from 100 to 50, and you guys can comment on the video all you want. You know, maybe I'll answer some questions, and when we're done, I'll answer some questions. Anything specifically about the top 100 list, I'll answer that first, and then I'll answer any other questions you feel like asking at this point, and that's fine. So. Um, we're going to get started here, and we're going to talk about each of these, and I'll also mention where they were in relation to the last two years, because we're having some data on this. But before we do that, let me be, I don't want to be self-serving here, but here's the thing. I really think the People's Choice Top 100 is the definitive way to look at the most popular games out there. See, I like Board Game Geek, and I think Board Game Geek is a fantastic website, but Board Game Geek's ratings, there, there's a couple problems with it. First of all, ratings never change. So if, if you don't go in there and manually fix your ratings all the time, high ratings that people put in in 2000 are still there. And so games that people don't play today, but had a whole bunch of high ratings when they came out, stay there. Since we make people vote every year, you're going to see some changes in the top 100 out here. I mean, some pretty big changes. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, there was like massive changes in the, in the top 10, but you, well, you'll have to wait till then. But there's a lot of changes, a lot of things uh, up and down, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that, and so I'm going to talk about that as we do it. Uh, thank you. For my room is kind of messy. This is a workroom, and there's a reason for that. I'm trying to do tons and tons of uh, reviews. Also, we were pulling uh, games off the, uh, the, 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 sh the shelves so I could show them on this here. So anyway, uh, once again, can't turn up my volume, folks. I have it, I believe maxed out as far as you can go and i apologize about that let me look at the sound here uh yeah that's about the loudest i can make it the way it is right now my apologies but anyhow um so i'm getting off topic here looking at the comments so anyhow uh let's talk about some of the ones that just missed the top 100 so we'll go up to uh 110 so these are the top 10 that missed the top 100 okay 110 is ridiculous it really is and that's nothing personal and that, I am sure, is only on there because of loyal fans. And I appreciate that, and that's nice. But I cannot see that it would be number 110. 109 is Keyflower, which is good for Richard Brees. It seems to be one of the more popular of his games. 108 was Rex. So Rex has fallen off the list. I guess it was popular as the reprint of Dune last year. Still pretty high up there. Don't forget anything. One of the things people is like, how can it not be in your top 100? Because there's 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 games. Anyway. 107 is Trois, uh, or Troyes. 106 is 
Core Worlds, which went, came down from 121, so I guess the expansion helped that one out. Uh, Letters from Whitechapel's 105, which came up from 139. Yido is a brand new game, hit the list at 104. Betrayal at House on the Hill is at 103. Last year it was 86, and the year before that was 72, so we've seen a drop there. Kingdom Builder just missed the list again at 102. Last year it was 104. So sad. And uh, Last Night on Earth is at 101. Last year it was at 58, and the year before that it was at 51. Now, I'm not sure why the drastic change there. Uh, maybe I, I, I can't even guess on that one why it would have gone down. All right. So here we go in the top 100. Now, if I have the game in my collection, and I feel like bringing it out, um, there's a couple, I'm not, and I'll explain why when, when we get to them. Um, and I'll, I'll quick show it to you so you have a sense of the game. Otherwise, you're just going to have to imagine it. Or, even though I just kind of uh, knocked on Board Game Geek's rating system a bit, and I think it's a fine rating system, um, but they're a great website to find all these games at, and you certainly should look them up there. So are we ready? bum ba da bum 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 Number 100 is Chess. This is good because it gives her less credibility. Um, chess is a uh, tough... <laughs> it's one of those games that if it's not your list, people are like, oh, I can't take your list seriously if you don't chess. But at the same time, it is interesting that with all these new and with our cult of new following and all these people playing games, chess still made it up there. Now, last year it was at 96, and the year before that was at 68. So will chess make it next year? Uh, I'm not so sure, but still interesting to have it on there. All right, 99, Space Alert. Now, this one surprises me somewhat because Space Alert is a real-time um, cooperative game, which I very much enjoy, but it's very frustrating for some people because it has a real-time aspect. Um, it's, it's very crazy. You're doing programming. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people who hate it, okay? But it is a, a very fun game with a very strong theme, one of the funniest, best, well-written rule books I've ever read. Um, a, a very good game. Uh, I got rid of it because I can only have so many cooperative games at any one time, but I do very much enjoy it. So uh, last year was at 63, the year before that is at 53, so it is slipping. Well, we'll have to see. All right, number 98 is a new entry to the list, but it is not a new game. So I'm curious about that. Number 98 is Jamaica. Jamaica, the one of the coolest boxes there is, by the way. But Jamaica is a pirate ship racing game, and um, in Jamaica, it's a very simple game. I don't know, probably came out six, seven years ago, and then a reprint came out a few years after that. Maybe it's just getting out there. Maybe there's a wider distribution. I'm not sure why. I think it's a fine choice for the list, but I think it's interesting. It wasn't even in the top 200 last year. So anyway, number 98, Jamaica. Number 97... Eminent Domain. This game sure gets a lot of love. Uh, a space game. I'm still very interested to see what the expansion does for this. It has a very interesting cover to it. Usually, uh, these you know you would expect spaceships and things, but this just I like this cover to it. But this is a deck building um, strategy game. Although I would be hard pressed to call it deck building. It's more role card playing. It has a strong feel to it. I think to Glory to Rome more than it does to a deck building game. But it was one of the first games on Kickstarter that did well. It wasn't the first, but one of the first ones, and I'm glad to see that people still like it. Last year at 74, dropped to 97, but again, that's probably just the vagaries of time going by, but I think it's impressive that any game's in the top 100 because it shows that it has staying power. All right, 96. Oh, I don't have 96, which makes me sad, but I think I might get another copy of it, and that's Kaikladis. Or you might know it as Cyclades or Cyclades. But I was told, I think, in the last live production that it's Kaikladis. Well, anyhow. Um, Kaikladis from uh, Asmodee and from Madagat Games is an amazing game with wonderful miniatures. And, and it just it's a game that really has gotten a lot of love. Now, I kind of like its newer, younger brother, Kemet, better. Um, but I think both games are very neat. If you've never tried one... These are the perfect integration of the Euro mechanics with the uh, war type thing. So last year it was at 64, the year before that 46, so it is dropping some down to 96, but still staying strong. All right, number 95, the secret cabal guys uh, will probably have my head for being this low on the list, I suppose, or have my head for the fact that I don't have this game, and that's Glory to Rome. Last year 77, the year before that 55. 
very impressive by the fact that it's practically impossible to find at this point in time, and yet it's still on the top 100 list because it has that staying power. It's a very unique game. I can't think of any other game. I mean, I mentioned Gem in the Domain, but I can't think of any other game that came before it. This was like a, a new groundbreaking style game, and yet it didn't get a lot of love, probably because of the very poor packaging and, according to some people, the poor art. Uh, but Glory to Rome, if you've not tried it, it's a heady game. It will take you a while to wrap your mind around it, but it certainly is an excellent one, so that's number 95. Number 94, I have the game, but I'm not going to um, bring it out now because, let's see, if you can see... Uh, no, you can't see it. Let me see if I move my monitor. Okay, see all those white bins right there? That's Heroescape. Those are all the characters for Heroescape, and I have them all labeled so that I know where they are. And um, I, you know, I'm not going to bring that out, but Heroescape made 94. Now, last year it was 38. The year before that was 23. So that's a huge drop for everybody. And I think that's because Heroescape is starting to fade into the background. And in, in five or ten years, you're going to start seeing parents tell their kids, oh, when I was a kid, there was this game Heroescape, which was fantastic. And, you know, and it's, unfortunately, it's probably never going to be reprinted. But what a fantastic game. And obviously people still like it quite a bit. All right. Number 93. I do have that one. Castle Panic. Now, this one last year was 79. So that was the first year it was on the list. Castle Panic has been out for a while. It has been uh, basically changed up a bit with the expansion. I thought the original game was a good family a game and it was fun but uh, it was more on the fan for cooperative games the expansion knocked it up a notch now i haven't played it yet but i'm very excited you can see on my shelf over there right above my finger you can see dead panic which i have and i'll be looking forward i'm going to be trying to play that this week so i'm very excited to see how that has changed the system so anyway nine, number 93 castle panic number 92 one moment Sorry. Number 92 is another one I don't have, but I know I've played it, but I know a lot of people like it. And that's from Fantasy Flight Games, the new Sid Meier's Civilization. Sid Meier's Civilization brought Civilization 4 to, or Civilization 5, I would say, to the board game world. It didn't do a perfect job of it because I don't think you can, but it did a good enough job of it. It's a long, lengthy, involved game. But one of the interesting things about the Sid Meier's Civilization is the multiple paths to victory. Uh, last year it was 67, year before that was 32, so it's dropping down, and I suspect this will be the last year you see it in the top 100. Um, but I, I think it will have some staying power that people will still be playing it, although I wonder if people will still be playing it in 10 years. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So number 92, Sid Meier's Civilization. All right, number 91 I don't have because I got rid of it because I knew if I wanted to play it, Z had it, and that's Bonanza. Bonanza, the bean game, last year 69, the year before that 42, so also dropping. But Bonanza is one of the classic games. When you think Uwe Rosenberg, you often think of Le Havre and Agricola and all his newfangled stuff. But Bonanza is the game that put him on the map, where you had a handful of cards and you could not change the order of them. And the only way to change the order was to manipulate them by trading with other players. If you play with five or six or seven, a lot of trading going on, play with five. Seven's too many. Um, but very entertaining, interesting game with some pretty cool artwork, although trying to talk people into playing, let's play a game about bean farming, uh, was not so easy. The board game version of it, not worth your time, but Bonanza, fun, and I can see how it made it to 91. That was the first 10. Are you with me still? A few people are. All right, so let's move on to the next 10. Number 90 is Belfort. Belfort is a very strong worker placement game. You say, Vassal, where is it? Well, again, I can only keep so many games in my collection, so Belfort had to go. But I thought it was a good game. Uh, I'm curious how the expansion plays. I know people in my gaming group have it, so I'll probably give it a try with them at some point. I like the city building aspect mixed with the dwarves and the elves. Had some unique features that no other game had with some really good artwork. Josh Capel does a fantastic job in that regard. So, number 90, Belfort, last year 85. So not a very big drop, which is pretty impressive considering all the new games that came out. A lot of the games I'm talking about have been on the list before, not too many new ones, although as we get into the top 50, maybe we'll see more. But anyway, all right, so where are we at? Number 89. Oh, I have number 89. Pillars of the Earth. Well, 
If you watch our top 10 list at all, you know that me, Z, and Sam have all talked about how much we enjoy this game. It is an excellent game. It is a game that, when it came out, really made a big splash, although Stone Age almost usurped it because uh, it came out. they came out so close together, and Stone Age is easier. But this game does a fantastic job at showing how people build a cathedral, and I like it quite a bit. I don't see people playing it these days, so I'm kind of surprised it's still on the list, but 89, 83, 75? So it's, it, it hasn't dropped a lot, so that's Pillars of the Earth. All right, where are we at now? Pillars of the Earth, number 88. Formula D, which was on the list last year at 88. First game to hold its position. Year before that was at 97, so it's actually coming up. Now, why is that? I think Formula D is one of those games. You know how I talked about when we will be uh, parents? Oh, I am a parent. But, you know, when we're old and we're talking, we're like, oh, back in the day, we played HeroScape. I think Formula D will still be being made. I think this is a game that you're going to see being in the stores and being produced in 10, 15 years because it just has a quality. And, and the reason I say that is because Formula D, which was Formula Day, has been being produced for the past 15 years, maybe? That's a pretty good length of time for a board game. And so that I think that's pretty cool. It's a great racing game, and they keep producing new tracks for it. So Formula D is number 88. Number 87 I don't have, but I certainly understand why people like it, and that's Mansions of Madness. Although a big drop last year from 43. It was 63 and that up to 43, now it's down to 87. But at the same time, it's a game you really have to get into. It's, it's kind of like if someone wants to play Descent, but they want a horror theme, and they want puzzles, and, you know, there's a certain group in my play group, there's a certain bunch of guys who love Mansions of Madness. And I think it's a fine game. But I don't always want to play it, but there's guys who really like to play it. So those are that's, I think, explains its popularity. Because for a lot of people, it's just a little unwieldy and such. But anyhow... Um, no, this shirt is not a hint about anything, and it may be or maybe not. It's just a very comfortable shirt, and it's a cool shirt, um, but it's purple. That's the color I always play. All right, if it's in a game. All right, where are we at? 87 was Mansions of Madness. 86! 86 is a heavy box, Tales of Arabian Nights. Now, Tales of Arabian Nights was 82 last year and 57 the year before that, so more staying power for this. I think this one here... There's a lot of people who will argue that it's not a game. And I can understand that because you kind of it's kind of like a gigantic choose-your-own-adventure. And when it's over, I don't really care if I won or lost. I care about the story. The destination isn't nearly as important. But it is a ton of fun to play. It is a ton of fun to watch. And the amount of variations, I think there's 2,800 different things that can happen over the course of a game. That's huge. And that's funny. And I think it's doing well. I'm still waiting for a sequel to it to come out. And if I think if it did, it would do just as well. Um, it is interesting that Agents of Smirsh, uh, spoiler alert, did not make the top 100. I don't know. Maybe it's because it doesn't have the wide distribution. But it's a very similar thing. And it has probably a better game involved. Anyway, 86, Tales of Arabian Nights. 85! Risk Legacy. Now, Risk Legacy is one of those games that if I said, oh, and you know what, let me show you the inside of my box, people would scream no, because there's spoilers in there. Look at this, all the, the envelopes here have been ripped open, there's one here hanging by a thread, there's, uh, oh, I, I can't show you any more than that, because it would just spoil the game for those of you who haven't played, because it's a game that people play. But, for those people who thought it was a gimmick, and for those people who said that Hasbro was out just to get money from them, look at that. It is number 85. Last year was 52, but it's still on the list because people still enjoy it. Um, when you, I don't know, when you make a, uh, a game like this, and now that uh, I think, though, it will be off the list next year and everybody will be raving about the plaid hat version that Rob Daviel is making. So we'll have to see. All right, let's see. All right. Well, if you missed the list, we'll post it up eventually. Um, uh, but let's see. Where are we at now? That was 85? 84! I keep my 84 like this. This is an easy way for me to store it. What I do is, I have it in this plastic container. By the way, I bought this at Container Store. And I found that this was the easiest way to sort this game out, to put each pack in a sleeve. And so if I decided to use these missions, then I could use all the cards. And I'm talking, of course, about Star Wars, the card game. Um, I, I couldn't figure out how to sort it out, but
But I found out when I did it like this, then I just give all the, I just find whatever color. So I made the Empire pink because haha, -ha, Darth Vader. But anyway, um, you, you look through these and, oh, actually that's the uh, Rebels. Well, anyway, you, you look through these and pick the ones you want to use and then you put those packs and when you're done, you sort them out, put them back. It's an easy way to store the game for me um, rather than the original box. But Star Wars The Card Game is not getting a huge amount of love critically or online, but obviously people are buying it and obviously people are playing it. This is the first time it's made it to the list. At number 84 is a pretty good place to debut. So that's Star Wars The Card Game at 84. 83! I do not have it because I do not like it. All right, but it's Hive. Uh, I, under I understand it, okay? Just because I don't like Hive doesn't mean I think that it's a bad game. It really is quite a good game, I think. I just don't like it at all. And that's because Hive is an abstract game which has done something. It's brought new life into the genre. When you talk to people about abstract games, they almost always bring out Hive. Sure, there's theme in it with the animals, but it's essentially an abstract game as you move these pieces. Very interesting, and um, it's been out for a long time. Now, let's see. Last year, it was at 76. The year before that, it was at 62. So it has slipped down some, but I think it will still be on the top 100 next year. I'm just guessing, but that's Hive at 83. 82 is a brand new game, and I have to say, I was very surprised that this one was on the list at all, mostly because it's so new, and that's Forbidden Desert. Now, I wonder if some people voted for it because they thought they were going to like it. I, I just It's hard for me to imagine that it got into distribution that fast. Now, don't get me wrong. Great game. And I think this will be even higher in the top 100 next year. And ooh, look at the shiny things you can do with that cover. But um, Forbidden Desert is a cooperative game just designed by um, the uh, Matt Leacock and Game Right Games. And it's the third in the trilogy of Pandemic and then Forbidden Island and now Forbidden Desert. A lot of fun. Some neat aspects to this one. It wasn't just Forbidden Island Part 2. Um, so, like I said, I'm really surprised that it made it an 82, too. Anyway, that's Forbidden Desert. Number 81 I don't have. Last year it was 44, and the year before that was 30. I'm sorry, Mr. Sturm, it's dropping. And that's because 81 is Kalis. Kalis is a game that came out quite a while ago. I think it came out back in 2006, maybe. So that's seven or eight years ago. So, I mean, it is pretty good that it's still on the list, period. And it is a very well-designed game. Now, I personally think that it's been passed by other worker placement games. But, obviously, a lot of people disagree. And I would suspect a lot of people rated this highly, the ones who did rate it, which is why it's on the list. But, anyway, Kalis, 81. Number 80! I do have number 80. And that is Blood Bowl Team Manager. Now, this is another game, I think, that doesn't you don't hear a lot about it online. A lot of people talk about Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl, but not a lot of people talk about Team Manager Card Game. This is a, a really good game, and the expansion really helped it out a lot. I enjoy it. Obviously, that's why it's still in my collection. Um, Blood Bowl Team Manager, last year was 65, this year 80. Um, I think the, the whole idea of it, it's like a very complex game of uh, area control with cards, but it's not that hard to play, and it has a lot of theme, I think. The, the different uh, teams in it feel different. And I think some people were expecting it to be Blood Bowl, and it's not. And I'm kind of glad for that, because I thought it was a cool team manager game. So anyway, that came in at 80. Number 79, Innovation. All right, Innovation last year was 42. The year before that was 58. Now, I think if more people buy this version, the yellow version of it, I think they'll be enjoying it because it just looks so pretty. The other one doesn't look pretty, which is why I no longer have it. But the new pretty version... I like quite a bit, and hopefully this week I will review the new expansion, or the first expansion for the new pretty version. But anyhow, this is a light sid building game. A lot of people hate it, and a lot of people really like it. Um, uh, so I guess the people who really like it won out, which is why it made the list at number 79. All right. Oh, by the way, I guess I should spoil that there is no Cards Against Humanity on the list. Cards Against Humanity came in at um, 116. So sorry for those of you who tried to put that on list just to mess with me. Oh well, what can you do? Anyhow, after that, let's go to number 78. Oh, a big game. <sighs> Defenders of the Realm. Now this has dropped. It was 61 last year and 
38 the year before that, but it is an excellent game. And I wonder if it's going to start getting harder and harder to find, or if Eagle will continue to print it and publish it and get it out there. We'll have to wait and see. But another cooperative game. In fact, I think with the People's Choice, you'll see that cooperative games really reign supreme on the list, or at least do well as time goes by. This is a game that, at first blush, looks a little like Pandemic, but it's very different as people are a group of uh, warriors defending the capital from invading hordes. Um, but they manage to come in anyway, uh, and you have to try to stop them as best you can. A great game, super quality components, really heavy. All right, that was number 78, Defenders of the Realm. Number 77, another big box, but doesn't have to be, and that's Alhambra. And I have the big box version because it comes with one, two, three, four, five expansions in it, and each of those expansions has four parts. So there's actually 20 expansions here. If you like Alhambra, this is the way to get it. What I suggest is if you're not sure, check out Alhambra, play it with someone else, and if you like it, buy this. And if you don't, you know, if you're not sure, then just buy it, and, you're, and you have to buy games to play them, then I guess get the original one. But Alhambra has been out for a long time. It was 77 this year, but listen, last year it was 123. This is one of the few games that has gone up in the ratings. Now, the year before that was 81, so it's bouncing around a bit. I don't know why. It might be because I will be hopefully reviewing that this week. The New York game came out, and that's the same game with a different theme. And maybe that's part of it, but not sure. So anyway, Alhambra at number 77. Number 76. Remember I mentioned Kaikalades? Here's its younger brother, Kemet. This one is new to the list. It came out too late last year. For it to make that list, I'm telling you folks, this game has really been doing well. This is when people talk about their favorite games, you'll hear people talk about the new Pathfinder Adventure game and, and that like that. Kemet came out early in the year, and I think this is a strong contender for Game of the Year. I really do. Um, it is. It just it has fighting, it has special abilities, it has uh, great interaction, and it seems to be perfectly balanced. It is and cool artwork. It's really a neat game. So I'm glad this one debuted on the list, number 76, Kemet. All right, number 75 is another game that's new to the list, although it did come out earlier last year, maybe just coming around now, and that's Libertalia. Libertalia is a game of, of role selection. In fact, when we were talking about this the other day, Sam should have mentioned Libertalia, and so should we have. We just all forgot it for some reason. But it's really a cool game, a pirate-themed role selection game which plays differently all the time. And, I mean, the first time I played it, I said, wow, what is with this game? It was so much fun. And I still have a hard time justifying in my mind that this is designed by the same guy who did um, the game I threw off the roof, which for some reason it's, it's slipping my mind. But anyway, it's the same guy who did both games, uh, but this one is so much more fun. Anyway, that's Libertalia, and that made number 75. I just realized we're halfway through. And Libertalia and Kemet were new additions to the list. Now we have one that uh, two years ago was number 28. Now it, it was, last year was 60. Now it's 74. And I, it shouldn't be. But I'll tell you this one, I'm sure it's because of just unavailability. And that's El Grande. This is one of the oldest games in the top 100. Well, not as old as chess. But this is one of the best games there is, folks. If you've not played El Grande, you really need to give it a try. I just played it at Gen Con this year. Amidst all these new bustling games sat down and played El Grande, and it was fantastic. It was an amazing, uh, just, it's it's so well designed. If you can find this uh, for uh, on a sale somewhere, maybe someone's getting rid of it because they're getting all the new stuff, grab it. This game plays better than most new games that come out. It's so amazing. So anyway, that's El Grande, and that was number 74. Number 73, I do not have. I do not wish to have it, but I don't dislike it. I just... Whatever. Last year it was 105, so now it's popped onto the list, and that is Trajan. <laughs> there you go, Ryan. A game for you, Trajan, uh, by Stefan Feld. Uh, that should hopefully show people that this top 100 is not just all the new uh, thematic games. Yes, Trajan has made the list too, so is number 72. Let's just talk about them together. 73 is Trajan, 72 is Village. I don't have either one of them, so that's how that works. Uh, but I wasn't super keen on Village. Village cut left me cold. Trajan left me even colder, but I really liked the gameplay of Trajan. I liked getting all those points. It just, I the theme was just completely out of there. But it was a good game. Village is also a good game, but left me so, I don't know why. 
they're both good games. They really are, and I and I could see why people like them, and that's certainly why they're on the list. They from 106 and 105 last year to 73 and 72. Now for a game that's new in the list, and it's not because of my version. Ugh. Heaviest game I will be talking about as an. Ah! All right, I don't have the regular version of it. This is the deluxe edition, uh, Takinoko. And the original version was out last year. And I'm not sure why it didn't make the top 100 or top 200 at all last year. But it's a good game. And I, I know some people are going to say, oh, the Deluxe Edition pushed it over top. Not enough people even have a Deluxe Edition for that to have happened. It's just been starting to be released. So it, that means the game itself has done well. That's one of the best gateway games out there. Granted, the cute panda bear is probably... Swing a few votes in its favor, but number 71, Takinoko. All right, number 70. Star Trek Fleet Captains was number 53 last year. So despite what people say about this game, and despite the fact that we haven't heard that much, people still like it because really this is the an entire season, seasons of Star Trek shoved inside a box. Now, I have to say, I am getting tired of this oversized box. Um, it's really hard to fit on the shelf for those kids. Stop putting boxes out like that. But it is a fantastic game. When you play it, you are reliving so many events from all the different Star Treks and maybe changing how they work. You have to try it out to see it, but you can do all sorts of things. Tribbles show up and Romulans and Klingons and, and, and bears and lions. Oh, my. But, I mean, it's just all in that box. So, number 70, Star Trek Fleet Captains. All right, number 69 has been sitting behind me, and that is Lost Cities. Lost Cities last year was 45. The year before that was 70, so it's kind of zigzagging. I think it will continue to zigzag because it's a game that a lot of people like, a two-player card game uh, that's just so easy to jump into. Again, like El Grande, it's one of the older games on the list. Some people say that it's been surpassed by newer two-player games, but there hasn't been a newer two-player game, I think, that has the simplicity and the depth and cutthroat play occasionally of Lost Cities. So that's number 69. Number 68, I take, I've taken a lot of flack over my opinion of number 68. Uh, number 68 for me was, uh, because when we talked about it, I said I wasn't a big fan of the theme. The designer of number 68, Eric Lang, is a friend of mine. Uh, Chaos in the Old World is the game. And I just wasn't keen on being an evil god, uh, evil demon god trying to destroy as much of humanity. I, the game was just very, very dark. But I was able to look past it and see that the game itself is exceptionally designed. It's one of the best asymmetrical games that's ever been made, has high component quality, and if the darker theme doesn't bother you, it is a fantastic game to get into. And so number 68, which was 56 last year, and 31 the year before that, so still staying pretty strong, is Chaos in the Old World. Number 67, Robo Rally. Ah, this is a heavy box because I have like four different versions of Robo Rally in here, expansions and things. Robo Rally is a game that, let's see, it was 46 last year and 40. It's a game, it's a timeless game. Richard Garfield, designer of Magic the Gathering, is the designer of this game. And this is, by the way, this is the Amigo box. It's one of the best quality boxes, which is why I keep my stuff in it. But this game, you program your robots and then you see what happens. Now, there's a lot of programming robots games. In fact, I will be uh, reviewing hopefully one of them this week. Uh, but I, this is still probably the best, the most classic one, Robo Rally. All right, number 65. <clears throat> the Manhattan Project. Oh, I skipped number 66. You didn't hear that. Number 66. Sorry, that's what you get when you do it live. Number 66 is War of the Ring. Now, War of the Ring was 54 last year and 54 the year before that. 66 this year, still staying strong. Remember I said that Star Trek Fleet Captains was Star Trek in a box? This is Lord of the Rings in a box. You know what, folks? If you want to make a good game about a license, then make it in a box. <laughs> you know? So take whatever the theme is and put it in a box. And that's what War of the Rings did, and that's what Star Trek Fleet Captains did. I think they're uh, a lot of fun, both of them, and but they're also very, very involved. So number 66, War of the Ring. Now, 
spoiler already, 65 Manhattan Project. Okay, anyway, Manhattan Project, a worker placement game. This is new to the list. It was out last year, getting some buzz, but now it's really out there, and this is a very strong, high debut from this game, a game that certainly deserves it. Um, this is, I mean, I keep playing this, and just every time I play it, I think, wow, this is just, this is such a fresh, fun worker placement game. You, you've, the way I like worker placement games are games that don't tax you too much, but, the, you know, they make you think, but in this one, I'm like, oh, I want that, 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 and you can get lots of it. And those are the kind of worker placement games I like the most. And so I think that's why Manhattan Project is high on many people's lists and number 65. Also, it has a unique, refreshing theme. 64, also brand new to the list. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Escape, the Curse of the Temple. Escape. Such a fun game. And when people say, how long does it take? I can say 10 minutes, and I'm not lying, because it is exactly 10 minutes. Well, not counting rules explanation, but it's so easy to teach people. And it's a tense, frightening, fun, cooperative game. Really neat uh, what comes in it. I like it quite a bit. So number 64 is Escape. Number 63, up from number 91 last year. Some of you were talking, I saw in the comments, about zombies. Yes, Zombie Side has moved up from 91 to 63. Very impressive. And I think that Cool Mini or Not is showing how a company can take Kickstarter and use Kickstarter to become a solid, strong, good company. I mean, there's no denying that Cool Mini or Not is a publisher to be reckoned with at this point, and they know how to handle things. So Kickstarter is not full of nonsense. There's some good publishers out there. And Zombie Side, uh, I liked it, but I didn't love it as much as some people did. But obviously, those people are on this list. The so number 63, Zombie Side. Number 62. 39 last year, 27 the year before that, so three years on the list in a row by Mr. Bruno Fiducci, one of the oldest games on the list again, and that's Citadels. Citadels is a great role selection game, not as good as Libertalia, I think, but obviously a lot of people liked it. I just saw it being played the other night at my gaming group, so it has a lot of staying power, and that's why people keep putting it on the list. Number 62, Citadels. Sorry. Number 61 is another brand new addition to the list. Very brand new because it just, I mean, it's been out for a few years, I guess, in, in overseas, but now it's here. Hanabi, the cooperative game that won the Spiel des Jahres, in which you look at other people's hands and then you try to work together to uh, light the fireworks, I guess. Um, but wow, I see this being played all the time in my gaming group. I see this being talked about and played at gaming conventions. It's very high buzz. Um, it's a strong Spiel des Jahres winner, stronger than I gave it credit for, I think. I think this game has a lot bigger legs, and obviously by the fact that it debuted here on the list at number 61. All right, 10 more. Here we go. Number 60, which was 33 last year and 22 the year before that. Why the drop? Who knows? But anyway, it's Through the Ages. Through the Ages is a very solid civilization game, which might lose some points because the component quality wasn't as high as other civilization games. But if you want to take Civilizations 4, 3, and 2 and make it into a game. Remember I said Sid Meier's was like Sid 5? Sid 4, 3, and 2, that was through the ages. It was a game that put uh, the designer, Shabata, on the, on, the, on the map, really. So through the ages, a good, solid uh, game, at, still on the list three years in a row. Number 59. I like this game, Suburbia. I know some of you have pointed out behind me that I have this just came in the mail. I'm so excited. Suburbia Incorporated. Wow, folks. For those of you who like Suburbia, it has these, um, what are these? Uh, these are like things that you can put on the side of tiles and you can you can stick them on a tile and have it go off in a different direction and then stick another one. They can also be used as water. Oh, it has new buildings and goals and challenges. Looks super fun, haven't played it yet. Suburbia is the best city building game I've played. It is a very fun one, um, but it's new to the list, I think, uh, because it probably came out a little bit too late last year to make the list. But obviously, that's a very high debut at 59, Suburbia. Great game. You should play it. I'm going to play it this week. All right, number 58, which was 50 last year. So that didn't drop hardly at all, which is very impressive. It is a cooperative game, Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Like I said, the cooperative games are still doing very well, very high on the list. And so... 
anyhow, putting out a fire. A lot of people like that. Can't say much more about it. I still have it on my shelf. Number 58, Flashpoint Fire. Number 57, which was 32 last year and 64 the year before that, so bouncing around, is Quarriors, which I keep in my Quartifax box. And whew, I keep it in this box because I like seeing all those Dice Tower <laughs> Award nominations up there. But it really is fun. And it really doesn't get enough, you know, it's one of the, Quarriors is one of those games that a lot of people are like, you play Quarriors? And all the other people are like, yeah, we're having fun! You know, you don't hear as much about it online, but when you go around and see people, they're just really enjoying and having a good time at it. So I really could see why it made the list at 57. Number 56, which was 47 last year, so it didn't drop very much, is a game that you don't hear talked about as much, but a lot of people play it, and that's Elder Sign. I mean, a lot of people play it. Uh, there is, I mean, Elder Sign, I know, has done very well for Fantasy Flight games. Um, it takes Arkham Horror, puts down a dice rolling. They took a lot of the theme out, and yet the game still it just attracts people. Maybe it's just the way that the dice roll on it. But number 56 is Elder Sign. Number 55, which was 35 last year and 41 the year before that. A strong, always contender on the list, and that's Survive. The game that put Stronghold games back on the map when they produced it, because everyone had wanted this. You can see here that this is the 30th anniversary edition. A 30-year-old game. Well, 30-plus-year-old game now making the list. Well, that's because it is a fun family game about making your kids, people die and get eaten by sharks and squids and such. But it works. Um, and this is the the version that they made that could sell more copies. I think it's pretty cool. High-quality components. A lot of fun. Survive. The piles are starting to get high behind me here. But we're almost done. Let's see. That was 55. 54. Now, I have this game, and that's because I have not yet reviewed it. And I'm going to review it, and that's Terra Mystica. The reason I haven't reviewed it yet is because, well, we need to play it more before I can give my final opinion on it. Terra Mystica is a Euro game that has really gotten just slobbering, slaverish, uh, saliva-induced love from people. They really, really like Terra Mystica. Um, it, there's a lot of moving pieces in it. It's a very strong mechanical game with a fantasy theme, Terra Mystica, debuting on the list, I think. Yeah, at 54. So, another strong game along the same lines, but with a stronger theme. And I don't have this game because uh, people in my game group have it, so there's no reason for me to hang on to it anymore because uh, I can play it with them and I don't play this game that often, is Dominant Species, which... Came on the list two years ago at 24, then at 36, now it's at um, 53, but that's still pretty high on the list. It's a game, it's a worker placement, heavy Euro game with all this fighting and nonsense in it. It's really a strong hybrid and one that a lot of people enjoy. Long, heavy, well, it doesn't fit every crowd, but obviously high enough that it made this list at 53. Number 52 is Kingsburg. Kingsburg is a dice rolling game very fun it was it was 51 last year and 59 a year before that this is again one of those games that you find people playing over and over again and i wouldn't be surprised if you this is still on the list in five six years because it's just a, a perennial favorite very easy beautiful artwork lots of fun kingsburg oh, that's not gonna work. all right and the last game for today number 51 is Resistance Avalon, which some of you have seen behind me. Well, this says Resistance. That's because I finally got smart and realized I could put both of them in the same box. I didn't have to debate on which one to keep. So Resistance Avalon, not Resistance. And I did that because Resistance, it's possible it's somewhere else on the list. Who knows? Um, so anyway, Resistance Avalon, I think, takes the Resistance, puts it in a Camelot theme, and makes it a lot of fun, uh, very entertaining to play, and it certainly is very popular. Maybe someday you'll hear more people talking about this than Werewolf. Not sure, but you never know. So that was number 51. That's 50 games. And we did 50 games in 44 minutes. Not so bad. Um, so this week, you're going to see me going off of this list, which is my top 100 games. Uh, so we'll start doing that. We're going to start recording those and going through that. I'm very excited about these. Um, I had some, I, my list got shook up this year more than any other year. Um, so for various reasons, and I'll talk about that when I get on the show. 
So before I end this, we'll take some time here and answer some uh, random questions. If you miss something or want some clarification, now is your time to ask. So I'm looking at the comments. So if you have a question, you can throw one in there. And I think that you guys are lagging a bit behind me with my uh, broadcasting this. So I will wait for the questions. <laughs> but anyhow, um, just some comments. Let's see other comments. This is a week, folks, that I'm going to be doing a lot of reviews. I've already recorded 10 of them. Um, and I have a lot more to record. A lot of them are smaller games, but some of them you might find very interesting. I got a couple from Korea, a couple from Japan, including the sequel to Love Letter. I think a lot of people will be interested in that. All right. So, anyhow, um, still no questions, but I'm sure they'll pop up soon enough. Uh, and if there is no questions, then we'll just shut this down and save this online. Um, so I hope, and I, I said I'll announce this. Uh, big surprises in the top. Oh, how do I store my X-Wing minis? Well, very poorly right now. I have them all squished inside. I bought two boxes of X-Wing. And I have them all taken off the pedestals and mixed in there and down. And then that plastic box I showed you guys for Star Wars, I have all the cards and everything in one of those. I would really like a better storage system. Robert Searing, who does the website, showed me, sent me pictures of his. It's really well done. He, he cut out some foam core and really made a good job of it. I'm very impressed with that. I would like to do it that way. I'm not going to answer any questions about my top 100. Uh, why does the wolf out the moon? I don't believe in that shirt. It doesn't work for me. Uh, let's see. Rune Wars. Haven't yet played it yet. I should play it. Are there any games that didn't make the top 100 that surprised me? Well, let's look at that real quick. Um, trains didn't make the list, um, but I think it probably hasn't been out long enough. It made it at 120. I suppose we'll see it sometime in the future. Let's see. Munchkin fell off the list, which was a surprise. It went from 78 to 124. Uh, other games that fell off the list pretty big. Steam went from 71 to 147. That was kind of surprising. Um, yeah, but there wasn't any that uh, Acquire dropped from 59 to 117. And Merchants and Marauders dropped from 62 to 114. So those were some big drops. Railroad Tycoon went from 66 to 111. Train games are dropping like flies. Who knows? All right, anyway. Uh, let's see. What theme do you think will explode into popularity in 2014? Since the theme is always a copy of one, I'm going to say Castaways on an Island. All right, let's call that. Or maybe Adventuring in the Temples. Maybe we'll see a burst of those. I can only hope. Uh, let's see here. How do I shuffle my decks? It all depends. Um, for example, this is these are the cards we use for our top 100. This is Melodies. So I usually shuffle decks like this, um, but I, I don't, I'm not opposed to doing a riffle shuffle. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I, if it's not my game, I always ask the other person. Now, I can't bridge properly. My wife can. Um, or if it's a game where I'm really worried about the cards. But usually this works fine. Sometimes I throw them on the floor and then pick them up. When am I going to build an expansion for a bigger game room? Oh, I'd like to, um, but this one seems to be pretty good as it is. Uh, what do you think of Betrayal at House on the Hill? I think it was the worst reprint ever. They changed almost nothing when they had the opportunity to, but it is a really fun game. We're doing actually a, uh, a showdown topic on Betrayal at House on the Hill versus Arkham Horror. Let's see. What do I think of Quarriers? I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Why change format? Didn't have time for 10 games in one episode live years before. Well, I'll tell you why. There's, there's a couple of reasons. One is the Dice Tower keeps changing. So, you know, we did three top 10 lists at a time last year. We did mine, Melodies, and the People's Choice. And I'll tell you, that was really draining to do it like that every week. Because doing it in a format like this, pulling all the games off the shelves and putting them all back on, isn't the easiest thing in the world. But, I mean, it's possible doing that top 10 every list. And so I said, okay, we got to cut down. So what I'll do is I'll make the top, my top 10 list very exciting, have add Sam and Z. Melodies will keep Melodies the same, although I think her list is really interesting because, wow, the changes. 
I was really surprised by her number one. Really surprised by it. You'll have to wait and see. I was just kind of flabbergasted at it. But anyhow, um, so the I, I just I can't kill myself. I really can't. We started up a new two new podcasts, Board Game University and Dice Tower Showdown, and we're doing news every week now, and and the gaming updates from Cool Stuff, and the top ten list from me and Sam and Z. And Ryan Metzler doing his top 100, Eric doing his top 100, and I'm supposed to keep doing 20, 30 reviews a week or so. <laughs> we, something's got to give. So it was the people's choice, and I just decided to do it in this format. And I apologize for that, folks. Obviously, only 142 people right now are watching, but it's fun for me to do it that way. All right. Did I vote on the people's choice? Well, that's a good question. I didn't vote at all. But there were a couple ties. They were actually, all the ties were ones we just went over. So I broke the ties for those. I was actually surprised that there were ties on any of these because the amount of votes was just so vast and numerous. So I broke the ties for people's choice. But then, what does it matter? 78, 79, you know, things like that. I can't even remember off the top of my head what the ties were. I know some people are going to ask me that. But that's the only, only thing I did with the people's choice. All right. Let's see. Will Wheaton. You know, last year, Will Wheaton, uh, Z and I were laughing at Will Wheaton. We made fun of him a little bit in a jovial way, and we really took a lot of heat for that because uh, people looked at it as jealousy, and I, I didn't mean it that way at all. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he has an effect on it. I don't know how much of an effect he has on, on the specific audience who votes on it, but I think there's a lot of crossover in the audience, so maybe, maybe it does or not. But I, I would ha that'd be an interesting thing to track those numbers, I suppose. Do I worry about how my girls will feel about being in the videos when they're older? I don't worry about it. I mean, I figure that they will come to me someday and say, Dad, take them all down. In which case, I'll say, I, I don't, that's too much work. I don't know. I don't ever put them in a video without their permission. If they don't want to be in a video, they don't have to be, which is why you see some of them less than other ones. It's just the way it is. Do you consider games that came out at Gen Con for my top 100? I considered games all the way up to right before I put the list together. I believe, in Melody's case, there was a game that she added because she played it. And she said, I love this game. It's got to go in the top 100. So I let her add that one to the top 100. I have a lot of new games. There may be one or two from Gen Con on the list. You'll have to wait and see. Um... But there was a game that I played a couple weeks before I finished the top 100 list, and I said, definitely going to the top 100. Liked it a lot. What game is that? Wait and see. All right. Well, Painted Minis take over, as with the success of X-Wing. I do not think so, because it's very expensive to do. Big companies can pull off, WizKids and Fantasy Flight. Smaller companies, it's much more difficult to do. Can you fix the lighting for your next video? I'm looking a little dark. Well, I'm trying to stay mysterious. Yes. I'm trying to stay mysterious so people can't see. Uh, have you posted your system for determining your top 100 list? Okay. We are working still on making an automated system online. But we're still planning on doing one for the Dice Tower. So, uh, this is what we do now. We write all the num things on cards. And I'm not showing you the names of these because I don't want to give them away. This is Melody's list. And so, we, you, we go through the list. I, I take one card. And I put that card out and I say, okay. This game is, let's say it's Monopoly. Then I go through all the other cards. I make a card for every game for my top 100 list in the past. Any game I played over the last year, I think is fun. And then I look through my collection, any game I think belongs in it. And then I say, is this better or worse than Monopoly? So, boom, 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 boom. Then I take the better cards, take one card out of there, and do the same thing. Until I have a few cards, then I say, oh, I can, let's sort these out and make my top 10. Take the next pile, sort those out, make them my next 11 through 20. And then I go through the whole thing to make sure it makes sense. Finally, once I have the whole top 100 list done, I compare it to last year's top 100, and I just to see how things change. And then I'll be like, "Oh, I missed that game. How did it slip through the cracks?" Now I got to redo the whole thing. Making these is a lot more work than you think. Ask anyone who's done it. Eric Summer and Ryan Metzler, both of them, I said you can do it, and they were like, "Wow, this is a lot harder than I thought." It is. It's incredibly fun, but that's how I do it. All right, what are games on the list that made you laugh? Well, I can't answer that because that would give away some from Melody's list. Um, there wasn't any really game that made me laugh. I was just glad to see some of the games. Uh, let's see here. What top 100 made you cringe? 
Nothing really. I, I, I look at these games, and even if I don't like it, it should make the list if people like it a lot. You know, that's this is why I like this is why I like these kind of lists and awards better than one person. When one person picks something, it's just not as useful. <laughs> you say, Vassal, you put out your own top one. I know, I know, I know. And I think this list is more useful to people than mine is. Mine is just entertaining, I think. I just tell people what my preferences are. This list is useful because it's telling you what most people like. All right. When are we going to get a top 10 game sold at Toys R Us? That will happen. But it, mean, it would require me to swing by Toys R Us and see what the games are there. All right. What board game do you think that people think you will not like, but you actually do? Well, I don't know. People think I won't like most Euro games, and then I play them. And I mean, I have a pretty big track record of liking Euro games. So, all right. Did I like the ending, assuming I saw the ending of Breaking Bad? Well, I have very strong feelings about endings that are ambiguous. Like in Battlestar Galactica, they left a couple plot points hanging. They never explained them. Like one major character, they never explained why that character had gone through such major changes over the final seasons. That was very bothersome to me. Uh, Lost didn't answer about 280 questions. That bothered me. The Breaking Bad finale answered pretty much everything. Ended it very satisfactorily. And I saw it online that some people hated that. I was thinking, what? I like to have conclusions that make sense. So yes, I thought it was good. Um, what is Ice Hour going to be showing Venetia you guys playing against? We're working on it. Because there's two ways. We can do it live. Or I can just move out of the way here and show you watching us on the table. Um, but I also would like to use a better camera. I like to use my camera. But to hook my camera up to the Mac is going to cost money. And the Dice Tower is quite low on funds currently. So maybe after our Kickstarter next year, I'll get that worked out. I'm not sure if I want to do one that's live or if I want to do one that I edit down. It's, it's a debate. I guess maybe that would be a good poll to put up and see what you guys would like. All right. What's your favorite ancient or really old game? Checkers, maybe. I don't know. Poker? Whew. Questions are still coming in. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I, I have one of the clubs from UgTech. Maybe we'll use that in the thing. Someone said I should let Z and Sam hit me with that whenever I use the A word. Uh, Agricola. Uh, let's see. Showdown with Top Space Game. Core Worlds, Eclipse, X's, Proxima Centauri. You might see that on Dice Tower Showdown. Uh, Ryan Metzler is not doing a top 100 Euro games of all time. No way. Have you seen his list? Uh, it has, um, he just put Blood Bowl on it. Yeah, he's put a lot of Euro games, but he's putting a lot that aren't. And I think, I think when you get, I, I can't, I don't want to spoil anything, but I was surprised at one of the games on his list and the position that it held. All right. Is there a game that most people like, but you really hate? <laughs> I'm saving that one. We will soon be doing a top 10 list of games we hate. That's coming soon. Uh, what do you wish publishers included in their box more and more? Non-paper money. Extra dice for no reason that I could take them out and stick them in my dice drawer. How many votes were submitted overall? Well, I said that there was 1,700 people who voted. The number of votes was uh, 20... Okay, I'm going to pull it up online here. Hopefully this doesn't slow down the feed a lot because I don't remember off the top of my head. So it's going to take a bit for it to pull this up. But once it pulls this up, I'll be able to give you some exact stats. So if you guys can wait till then, um, I'll talk about that. Uh, let's see here. How does this list compare to the BGG Top 100? There's a lot of difference. There's a ton of difference. And I'll tell you why. Because there's a lot of games on Board Game Geek that a few people really like. And so they vote for those and they get high. And the people who don't like them, who would vote them down, don't vote for them, so they make it high on the list. There's other games that people, some people really like and other people really hate. The big difference about this list in the board game is there's no hate votes. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, there's nothing wrong saying you don't like a game. But what I'm saying is the only votes here are if people like it. So it's not being dragged down by people who not like it. So I, I think I would put this top 100. If someone said, what are the top 100 games that people are playing right now? Boom. Right here. This is the list. It really is. It's not the top 100 Board Game Geek. I get the top 100 from Board Game Geek and people say, how many of the games in that have you played? 
and I say, oh, and I look through it, and I think I played 80 of them, which seems really bad for someone like me who reviews games. I've only played 80, but there's 20 of them or so that I just don't have interest in playing, and I never probably will get to play. But of this top 100, I've played almost all of them. There's a couple I haven't played, I think. Um, I think all the 50 I talked about today I've played, and I think... I don't know. I might have played all top 100. We'll have to wait and see. Are those votes up yet? Okay. 1,780 people voted. There was 29,804 votes on the top 100 list. So if everyone had voted for 20, that would have been 34,000. So not everyone voted for 20, but that shows that most people voted for at least 10 or 15. Very impressive. There was 2,242 games that were voted for. And 1,032 of those games had one vote only. That'd be interesting to go through the ones that had one vote only. Uh, there's a ton that have just two votes. Like, here's some, I'll just give you some one vote only games. Battleship, Goblet, X-Bugs, Bamboozle, British Rails, Connect Four, Mexica, um, Blood Bowl First Edition, Doctor Who, The Game of Time and Space, Croak, All-Star Baseball, Horus Heresy, Slamwich, Forbidden Bridge, Battlefleet Gothic, Fortune, Frag Deadlands, Spellfire, Citadel, Odin's Ravens, Cranium Hoopla, Unexpected Treasures, Angola, Outburst, Ogre, Curses, The Longest Day, Magdar, Labyrinth, Heartthrob, Lunar Rails, Golo, Star Wars Miniatures, Clue FX, etc., etc. I'm not going to read them all to you, but that's, uh, that's just an example of some of the ones that are on there. All right. So those are the stats. I'm sure people will compare the stats later on. All right, where are we at here? What's your favorite rule book? I don't know. Uh, oh, I just said Space Alert. I love it. It made me laugh the whole way through. Uh, any thoughts on Serpent's Tongue? I have not played it, so I really can't give any more thoughts on that until I've actually played the game. So, When is 50 to 1? Probably not next week. It will probably be the week after that. I'd say two weeks from now. Seems like a good time. What comics do you read? Uh, I read Marvel almost exclusively. Not because I don't like DC, but I wasn't a big fan of the new 52. I read most Avengers and X-Men comics. The team comics. I'm not a big fan of the single character comics. I like when the whole team works together. Uh, let's see. What's your first live game feed? Why do people keep asking me that? We will announce it when I figure it out. I don't know yet. Are you planning on having a top 10 Halloween games? You know, someday. Someday. I don't think we'll be able to get it done in time for Halloween. But you never know. All right, let's see here. X-Wing and Attack Wing. Uh, Showdown of those would be pretty interesting. Um, but I need to find people who played both exclusively to be able to talk about it. Let's see. Do you have plans you make? Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Showdown between Mage Wars and Summoner Wars. That's actually already been recorded and will be showing up on Dice Tower Showdown soon. Do you know how many new games are on the People's Choice list? I don't know. Uh, I don't have a way to, to check out. I would have. I, here's the deal, folks. It's a lot of the work to put these lists together is manual. And so once I get to 100 and I'm done, which is a lot of work, I sit there and go, do I want to keep going You know, to do more? So last year, apparently, I went to 200. This year, I went to 125, and then I went and took the 100 from last year and also did those, checked the numbers for those to see where they were this year. For me, this year, I stopped at 100. I have 101 sitting around, but I just I just didn't want to do any more. And Melody, I think she, she went up to 120 or something. So it would be hard to compare more stats than that. Z should have a top 100. Well, that's a possibility for 2014, so with Sam. And um, that will actually be one of our Kickstarter um, stretch goals for next year. Um, and they both already agreed to do that if uh, as a stretch goal. So we'll talk about that then. What do I, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Have you thought of a good way to explain Terra Mystica to newcomers? Well, I know a way not to explain it, the way I was taught. Uh, let's see. What do you think of other gaming channels like Geek and Sundry and Bored with Life? Do I watch their videos? Well, 
I watched the Boardwood Life videos. I watched the whole series, actually. And um, I think it was well done. I think there was a lot of board game references in it. I wasn't a huge fan of it for a couple reasons. And, and it, I'm not knocking the production quality at all of the, of the videos. It, I just thought it was a little too adult for my taste. I was looking for something a little bit more family-friendly. Uh, but more, more than that, more than that, I thought that none of the characters were likable. They were all detestable. It's kind of like Seinfeld. Um, and I know a lot of people like Seinfeld, but the characters just were all mean and nasty. And if, if they were my gaming group, I would look for a different gaming group, really. But the, none of them look like they'd be fun to play games with. I have people in my gaming group who have weird quirks. Probably I'm one of them. But I don't mind playing with them. We laugh at the quirks and everything and move on. But these people's quirks seem like, ugh. Uh, with uh, Tabletop, I don't usually sit down and watch through the whole episodes. I'll skip through. Uh, I'll look at episodes either that have people in that I'm like, oh, I know that person from a TV show and such. And maybe watch them for a while. I watched a lot of the Shadows Over Cam Watt one recently because I was curious to see how they would handle the traitor. I was disappointed that he revealed himself as the traitor in, uh, in Shadows Over Cam Watt. I just felt like that's. I never would do that if I was a traitor, even though in like 50 games I've never been a traitor. But I just think it's more fun to have someone say, I know you're the traitor, and then force you to reveal yourself. Uh, let's see. Can't talk about my top 100. It's uh, about what games have stood the test of time until next until we actually do those. Uh, let's see. Oh, we do a top 10 asymmetrical games. That's a good idea. Good idea. Email that to me so I don't forget it. Uh, favorite trader mechanic. How does a dice tower make money and where does it go? Into my extensive wardrobe, obviously. Um, Dice Tower makes money mostly through Kickstarter that we will run at the beginning of this uh, coming year, at the beginning of the next year. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. A lot of the money goes into equipment and web costs and music costs and um, uh, travel costs, the conventions. Uh, a lot of the money went to that. Some of the money goes to my salary uh, to, for me to pay my web guys. A uh, little bit of money. I pay Eric some money. And so there's uh, buying games that we don't get as review copies. The money went really fast. And advertising money. Um, so uh, anyway, that's where it goes. How many votes did number 100 receive? Uh, maybe 40 or 50, I think. The number one game got, uh, out of 1,700 people, got a 700 votes, which is pretty impressive. All right, let's see. Is there a game that I don't like that I think I would like with a change of theme? Anything Stefan Feld does, really. I mean, I don't know. Do the, will those games handle a change of theme? I don't know. I know that we've talked about games that, oh, this would be so much better with a different theme. Uh, let's see. Yes, Alien Uprising is kind of like a sci-fi defenders of the realm but it is uh, different in quite a few ways too but i think you'd like it uh let's see have you thought about taking dice out other game conventions outside of gen con well we do we um we, we this year we went to origins and we went to um the gamma trade show and we went to total con and the dice tower con uh next year i'll be at the dice tower con and Gen Con and Board Game Geek Con, maybe. I don't know if I'll be at Board Game Geek Con next year. I'll be at Board Game Geek Con this year. Next year, I'm considering going to Essen. We'll have to wait and see if time and finances permit. I'm canceling all my um, uh, conventions in the beginning of the year because that is when my wife is due. Now, if, if for those of you who have not caught up on that storyline, let me quick give it to you so that I can expose, once again, my personal life to the world. But, um, <laughs> funny story. Uh, but not it doesn't start out funny, but many of you know that my son Jack Vassell was born a few years ago and died two months after being born. He was born two months early, premature, and got meningitis and died. And that started the Jack Vassell Fund, which I think is great, fantastic, jackvassell.org. Then my wife got pregnant again, and she had a miscarriage, and then got pregnant again, and... This time I had a miscarriage at seven months, which is very different than a normal miscarriage. It's a very, because you have to give birth to the baby. It's a very bad thing. And a doctor said, maybe you should stop having children. And I said, 
maybe that's not a bad idea. I don't want to keep going through this. So my wife had a procedure done so that we could no longer have kids. Well. So, another baby is coming. And it's due January, February. And it's a boy, uh, Jimmy Vassal. And because of what has happened in the past, obviously I'm ready to drive to the hospital at a minute's notice. So that's why I'm canceling all my conventions during that time frame. I need to be home. That's more important than anything else. You might see fewer reviews from me during that point, and I don't care. I will come back and get them done eventually, but let's just wait and see what happens on that. Um, we're hoping that this time it works out well. So I guess it's only slightly a funny story, but apparently I have a somewhat minor superpower. So anyhow. Um, I'm going to end this in about five minutes, guys, because I don't want to drag this out very long. Uh, so I'll just answer a couple more questions. Guesses for number one. Hey, hey, what game am I looking for in 2014? You know, I'm not even, I, I, I have no idea. There's, I, 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 I've just gotten past the point where I'm just getting super excited about games that are coming out far in the future because I only have time to concentrate on games that came right now. Can't wait to play the new Suburbia expansion. Um, if the only game in 2014 that really has me pumped up that I know about right now is the, um, the new Legacy game coming from, uh, Rob Dapio and the Plat Hat Games. But other than that, I'm just kind of waiting to see what else happens. All right. Are I going to Comic Con and or Dragon Con? No to Comic Con. Dragon Con, one of these days I might pop up because Atlanta's not that far away and Steve Avery lives there and said he put me up. But I heard that Dragon Con has a big board game room. But it's, the convention itself is not very gaming friendly. I think that if I was going to add extra conventions in, I might consider going to one of the PAX conventions. Uh, I might consider going to some of the larger regional conventions. I've been invited to go to a couple smaller conventions, and I had to say no because it's not so much, I mean, even if you offered to fly me in and put me up and feed me and all that, I can only spend so much time away from my family. My family is very important, and so I can't go to every convention over the course of a year. So I just try to pick the most important ones. I'm sorry about that. Uh, still haven't played Firefly yet. It's driving me nuts. I scheduled the game at Friday night, and there were lots of cancellations. So that did not happen. Um, you know what? I don't see any more questions right now. So I think I'm just going to end right here, guys. That's the top 50 games of all time. I hope that you guys enjoy them. Uh, I... We'll see you guys next week. I really do have a lot of reviews that we will hopefully be pumping out next week. And you'll see my top 100. You'll see Melody's top 100. We'll try to get both of those started next week. You will see Ryan Metzler's come to a conclusion. Or at least he'll be doing 30 through 10. Then the week after that, a conclusion. Very exciting stuff there. So there's a lot of great stuff coming from the, the, the Dice Tower. I'm really glad that you guys watched the show. And I will see you all next time. Tom Vassell signing out.